How do you stand flipper science? We're looking at soap and my cells. So science understands we're going to look at alkaline hydrolysis of triglycerides produces carboxylate ions, which have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. Um, explain how such particles form micelles, and explain how micelles can dissolve and move non-polar substances through aqueous media, or vice versa. So what is a soap? Soap is known as a, is a surfactant. It's a surface active cleaning agent. And we use soaps to remove grease. So these are non-polar stains. So... Uh, if you're eating spaghetti, that's a nice oily, greasy spaghetti, you spill that on your shirt, um, that's an oily, greasy stain. The way you get rid of that is by using soaps. The structure of a soap is it has a long, non-polar, hydrophobic tail. Hydrophobic meaning scared of water, so it doesn't like water. And then there's a charged head, so it's a carboxylate ion head that has a full negative charge, and these are usually sodium salts, so there's sodium ions attached to that. So sodium, um, so in solution, the sodium ions will detach. So you're just left with the negative carboxylate end, and then you have the long non-polar tail. So let's look at how you make a soap. So you can make soaps from fats and oil. So the way you do that is you heat up your fat or oil with sodium hydroxide. Or you could use potassium hydroxide if you wanted to. This is um, an alkaline hydrolysis reaction like we looked at before when we looked at esters, because fats and oils are triesters, C to the O to the C double O. So this is called saponification if you're making a soap. What happens is you produce glycerol, propane-1,2,3-triol, propane-1,2,3-triol, and you get soap. And that is the long carbon chain with the carboxylate head. And um, you have, well, in this case, we're using sodium hydroxide. You add, soap, uh, so you add salt to the mixture, and you get your solid salt precipitating out. So here's another example here. So we have a glycerol triesterate, triesterate, sorry. Um, so this is your fat, you boil that with your sodium hydroxide, you get glycerol, and then you get your um, soap. So we've got our long non-polar carbon chain, and we've got our carboxylate head. This is the bit that's soluble in water, this bit isn't. So how does this remove a greasy stain? So if we're looking at an aqueous medium, so let's have a look at this picture down here to get an idea. Um, when we're talking about greasy stains, we're talking about fats or oils that are on a surface. So it could be your clothes, or it could be your dishes, for example. So they have long non-polar tails, and that means they don't dissolve in water very well. They're not soluble in water. So we need to make them soluble in water somehow, and we do that using our soap. So the soap has a long non-polar tail that can um, interact and make secondary bonds with the grease, since they have long non-polar carbon chains as well. So we get dispersion forces acting between those, and we get attraction between the non-polar uh, non carbon chains. The other end of the soap is a negatively charged carboxylate head. And that's got a full negative charge, so that will attract um, the hydrogens in water. Since uh, water is a polar molecule, the hydrogens um, have a partial positive charge. They'll be attracted to the, partial, to the full negative charge sorry, of the carboxylate anion. That makes that end very, very soluble in water. So what you get is a micelle being produced, where you have your grease with its nonpolar chains. Uh, the nonpolar chain part of the soap gets attracted to that. The polar part of the soap, so the full negative charges, they repel each other because they have a full negative charge, so you get this uh, the grease being surrounded by these soap molecules. Um, that means that you have this bubble of uh, negative charges attracting the water, and inside you have your nonpolar tails that are holding the grease. And that, allow, that separates off of your surface, it floats around in the water, and that allows you to um, wash the grease away. So you're taking something that's insoluble in water and making it soluble in water by surrounding it by insoluble parts of soap and uh, with soluble parts on the outside which attracts the water. So that's what we call hydrophobic and hydrophilic. The nonpolar chains are hydrophobic, they don't like water. The full negative charge on the outside is hydrophilic, it likes water. So let's just restate that. Um, here you have your grease, your greasy stain. The soap molecules, the nonpolar tails dissolve into the grease because they have a similar polarity. They're both nonpolar, so dispersion forces are acting between them and they attract each other. The negative ends, however, they repel each other, so you get this repulsion happening um, all the way along your greasy part of the stain. That leads to the formation of these micelles that all have a surface negative charge, which um, dissolves in water readily, since there's full negative charges that attract the uh, partially positive parts of the water molecules. 
But since each of them has a negative charge, they're also repelling all the other negative charges around them. So that makes this round structure called a micelle. So you agitate your greasy stain with your soap, you form micelles, and they float around in water because they all have surface negative charges, so they repel each other. So this one won't get too close to this one because of the negative charge on the outside, they have a similar charge, so they repel each other. And what that leads to is your surface being clean and your water getting all these micelles um, with grease inside it. That's what you can see down here in this dish, dish water down here. You can see that kind of brown color. That's all those micelles that are being produced from the grease that was on these dishes. Now what's interesting is this can work the other way around. So if you have something polar and you want and it's floating through a non-polar liquid, this will work too. So your polar substance, you'll have your polar heads being attracted to the polar substance and your hydrophobic tails will stick out into your hydrophobic medium and you can uh, have your reverse micelle floating around through this. Now what's the point of this? Why, why is this important? This is being investigated for drug delivery. Since uh, many parts of your body have fat in it, if you need to deliver a fat, a, a water-soluble drug in a fatty area, you could make this reverse micelle that carries your drug um, through your um, non-polar area and then you could trigger that to um, break up and then you could deliver your drug to that particular area. So that's why this is being investigated. It's just restating again, you have a polar substance, it gets attracted to the polar end of the soap molecule, and then you have your nonpolar tails that are attracted to the nonpolar organic solvent that is floating around it. So this could be oil, for example. So you have your oil, um, the nonpolar tails are attracted to the oil, but you have your polar substance stuck in the middle. So it works both ways. So that's the science we looked at soap and my cells. That's the science today. See ya. <coughs>